Well, hi, I'm Kaylee. Um, I have been an RMT now for almost 15 years. Um, I'm also an osteopathic practitioner and I have been since 2015. Um, I'm also a lactation educator. Didn't finish my hours because that's not where I wanted to go with it. Just wanted the education. And I kind of started this endeavor with this taping background. I started, I guess my son's 10, so I started it because I had a difficult pregnancy and uncomfortable and having all the tools I had on my tool chest and all my friends, I just started to kind of dabble in taping myself and it was very helpful. And then midwives in our area asked me to teach them. So I just, it just kind of started with three, four techniques and now it's kind of flourished into um, post like, pregnancy care as well as postpartum, um, even lactation support even for breastfeeding. And that's kind of how I came up with this uh, lactation, uh, this uh, course for taping. And I dabble in everything. I, I do a lot of pregnancy, postpartum, babies. Um, is me one of only two of us here in the Niagara region that kind of specialize in that area. And then I also do concussions and stuff like that for osteopathic stuff, but it's a little bit of everything. Nice to meet you, Kaylee. So I'm Cindy McNeely from Trimester's Massage Therapy Education, and this will be the third time teaching at the CMC conference. And Trimester's is basically all about birth, pregnancy, babies, postpartum, um, the topic I'll be talking about the, for this conference is going to be focused on birth. Just every time I do a topic or a conference, I'd like to mix it up a bit. So I've been an RMT for 38 years and Trimesters has been in existence for 28 years. They still work. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm happy to meet you, Kaylee, and we're going to have a discussion about our work and the, the work that is needed for postpartum in particular. Okay. But I'm pretty sure we'll be deviating into birth and other things too. So, yeah, I, yeah, that's why I started this on the taping because, especially for as much as they need tape or support um, during pregnancy, I've also wanted this as a tool because um, I also teach my moms or their partners to tape themselves if they if safely. If I feel like they they're competent enough to walk away, so they have a tool in their toolbox to take home with them. Um, by teaching a few different techniques, using different types of even pre-cut tape. So that's kind of how I like to support them while they're pregnant, but also when they're postpartum, you've got, you know, all the things that go with it when organs are starting to settle or they're supposed to settle, it doesn't feel so good. Breathing doesn't feel so good. So that's how I kind of added my taping part into it. I even like rectus, rectus diastasis, so all those kinds of things. Great. And I'm really interested in what you said about taping for lactation as well. So mm. hopefully we can get into that as well. I mean, I think anybody who works with pregnancy, I'm just going to dive into the postpartum stuff because anybody who works with pregnancy, um, I don't know about in your practice, but historically when I would be working with pregnant people, sometimes weekly through their pregnancy, and then they'd have their babies and they'd vanish. And yeah. I wouldn't see them again for six months, nine months, sometimes not until they got pregnant again. And it I was a bit selfish because I also wanted to meet the babies. Um, so I just really started to make sure that I talked up postpartum massage yeah. all the time. And I, I don't know what your findings are, but certainly for my clients, if they're coming at least once a month post-delivery, their bodies are completely different than those moms who don't basically get a break from being in the house and from no self-care whatsoever. Yeah, so. I definitely I definitely find that. I mean, I do, and I still do both. I mean, I'm, I guess my foot is a bit more heavily in the osteopathic door, but I still massage. I still love it. So I still do quite a bit of massage, but you're right. Like I feel, I mean, I find most of it is maybe poor... I don't say the poor education, but poor knowledge and like the best breastfeeding ways to suit their body. You know, if they're heavy chested, they might be not using, you know, they might be really hunched over, but they could be utilizing a better position to like save their backs. So I like to educate moms on that, but you're, I am selfish too. I often offer my uh, moms the baby's free treatment sometimes so I get to see them. Right. <laughs> cool. And so I'm assuming, um, well, I'm assuming maybe wrongly, but as an osteopath that you're going to be really focusing also on the realignment and the reorganizing of the postpartum pelvis for uh, pregnant or sorry, postpartum women, because they have all the lordosis and the kyphosis that again, that isn't is. our work that, but 
Yeah. Even like broad ligament pain, I still like, I still, if, as long, those, providing they haven't had a C-section, I'll even still, you know, that's why I like to do taping too. You can still tape the broad ligament postpartum, especially if they're still having lower back pain to complement. I mean, I use it more as an acute tool anyway. So in between all the team players that need to come and miss, you know, if they're seeing their osteo massage, it's just to keep them comfortable, but you can still support them in between. But I mean, I see clients a bit more, I don't, I get them more than six months postpartum often, but yeah, they definitely don't take care of themselves. Or if, they, if, if the uterus isn't settling properly, it just plays a whole role on their lower back or maybe one ilium versus another, just tears everything apart. Or if they're carrying a previous child on one hip and feeding off the other, like they found like they're so out of alignment. Yes. Well, and again, being having started this perinatal work 38 years ago, it's such a mm-hmm. different reality now. Um, I, I do think the there are many, many families who are much better educated now about their bodies and care for their mm-hmm. bodies, but there's still um, a lot more we could do as well mm-hmm. for them. So it is great when they know, yeah, I want to come in the first month after delivering my baby to mm-hmm. get my treatments. Makes What's just good for difference. overall circulation? What else, what else do you, in your course that you're teaching at the conference, what, is there any particular um, avenue you're going to be going down? Uh, with the postpartum? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because I, I, at the conference, actually, I'm talking about birth. I made a decision. Oh, birth. Okay. In the past, I, I've done pregnancy, and then I think I've done some on babies, but this time I've chosen birth. And so the thing that I want to focus on is that a lot of massage therapists will take the pregnancy courses and be really excited and have that as a practice um, focus but they don't go ahead and do the labor support training or birthing training because they think I don't have time in my practice to attend a birth, therefore I won't bother learning that skill set. And in Mm -hmm. fact, um, I recently met a colleague in Halifax who sat in on my workshop and she had trained as a doula over a decade ago and hearing some information about birth made her go, oh my gosh, my kids are teenagers now. I want to get back into the birthing work. And so she started off by, um, she had like seven pregnant clients as soon as she got back from the Halifax conference. And she put together, she pulled out of her file drawers a whole course she had made over a decade ago for parents about going into the birthing experience together. And it's just real relit her passion and so what I would like to talk about in the conference is why RMT shouldn't just stop at the pregnancy point or or pick up again in the postpartum but actually to train the labor support get trained in labor support so they can teach partners um, I still find a lot of partners think they can go into a birthing experience with their partner and do it all by themselves and I it makes my heart kind of lurch every time yeah. because we, families need all the support they can get and so if I can convince RMTs at that conference to take a labor support course learn how to be competent with birthing techniques to teach couples and then you may be invited into a birth or you may not, or you may uh, be teaching in your clinic how techniques. Or the other thing I find, which is so exciting, there's two with RMTs. If they've already delivered, often the birthing classes that we teach have RMTs get a chance to revisit their own birthing experiences and process it in a way that may have been unfinished because they may have had experiences that they didn't fully understand, but was were either wonderful or not wonderful. And then the people who've not had babies yet, I'm like, trimestress gives you all the prenatal birthing stuff you need to go in. And honestly, the RMTs are so differently educated when they go into their own births. It's like, woo, I get the emails of, I just had my baby and this was my experience. And it's like, Wow, you just advocated and made this happen. So I'm off. I'm off postpartum already and on to birth. But that's what I'm going to be talking about at the conference. So it's very cool. You're going to be talking about taping for pregnancy and yeah, then- yeah. yeah. I try to make it um, when I've built on it. Just kind of start with pregnancy, but end postpartum with breastfeeding support. 
Um, and I, I mean, with, I had a lot of taping background, so I have athletic taping background, uh, kitty taping. So those philosophies, I just kind of took them and conjoined it with osteopathy in a sense. And also experimented on myself and clients and stuff like that. So I do more of a, more of a postural support because I don't want them to get lazy. So I do more of a postural support taping for um, breasts, again, depending on their needs. Um, so they can remind reminded that to you know, sit up tall or you know, get more pillows. And I'm also working on other, it's in my course, but it's, it's a hypothetical I'm trying to work on. And I'm working with a lactation consulting clinic in Burlington um, for inverted nipples. So taping, instead of having to use nipple shields, so I, I have got a few pictures, but I haven't, I mean, on a low scale, it's not very big yet, but it's, it's really, it's working, which is great. Not for like completely invaginated nipples, but it's working. So they don't need to have a uh, nipple shield or I've had one, she's had a cracked nipple because it was folding in and we taped it. It took three days healed and it was good. So it's fantastic. Hopefully, hopefully it will morph into more. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the breastfeeding issues that are out there these days feel absolutely enormous to me, mm -hmm. and, and there's not enough support. There, no. there just isn't. So to add taping to that is, and I that's was my major question: is it mm -hmm. for the thoracic area, or are you talking about right on the breast to both? Uh, both. I mean, I'll, I'll, depending on the, sh uh, the the problem of breastfeeding to begin with, if they're completely more of like neck pain or thoracic pain I'll, I'll start there you know we'll start with you know doing some upper fiber trap stuff and it's a little bit different than uh, other courses um and even sometimes i'll even cross the spine which is a no-no in some of the keeping k taping courses but when you're doing it for support it's a bit different i'm just doing a postural support i'm not putting any influ influ influence on the vertebrae but and then i will do breasts depending on because sometimes too, they have one breast will fill and it just gets awkward and so uh, yeah so the the breast taping though it's I, I guess in all hindsight it's hypothetical there's no course on it I'm 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 making it right now but it's hard to kind of navigate that with uh research and ethics and so I'm working with um uh, a, a, a lactation consultant clinic that they're all just lactation consultants and nurses so I go there once a month and we, I mean we don't get always get a lot but we may get a one or two and then we can try it out and I've taught them to do it but it's just a matter of they also don't feel as confident yet with their skill set to to do it because it's like a drum head if you ever or a trampoline bed you have to kind of like everyone's breasts are different so it's 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 interesting oh it's it's great mm -hmm. i I'm so excited with the new forays that you know there's always developments in this area osteopathic and and pelvic floor work for instance has just changed the perinatal realm completely um, mm -hmm. So this is another new terrain, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, one of the things that I, I did up until just before COVID is ran a clinic at Sunnybrook with one of the massage therapy colleges for the, it was in basically all of the perinatal units, but including the high risk pregnant people. And most Ooh. of them are stuck in bed and they mm -hmm. have high risk conditions. And I'm just, and they love the massage. Like for 25 years, we've done it and they just absolutely love it. But taping would be another amazing thing to add to the roster when they are considerably less mobile than the average pregnant person. Well, especially and if they've had like a shattered pelvis or something, we can, you know, you'll lift and support those broad ligaments, support the back. Um, and they can wear it for two or three days when they when they have it on. I mean, I, some wear it longer, but I, I never suggest it. But it's neat how they can be so supported. Yes. And I mean, some of these women can can only have a shower once a week because they can only get out of bed to basically pee. That's and right. and so to have the taping would be phenomenal. So, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm only be teaching a modified version, obviously, because I only have two hours at the conference. So I'm trying to pick, I guess, I, I, mean, I may even have the class, I may even have them vote, but, you know, what because I have about 20 techniques, so we'll probably maybe vote on what's, what do they most see in their practice. And then we'll just right. kind of go from there after all the safety regiments, <laughs> all the safety, and then has how to use a tape and to begin with. There's so many different types yeah. of tape, but yeah, it's been interesting. Even in Niagara region, I have taught all the midwives, but again, only two of them feel confident to use it, which I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy they know it though. They know they have something they can provide them if they, if they can't see the next team player for a while or something. Right. Well, you know, whether they use it or not to also know that you're there as a resource that mm -hmm. 
you are happy to see their clients and and do the taping mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, and obviously one person certainly can't do it all. But um, oh yeah, that's why I started teaching it because I figure I need more I need more minions to know how to do this. I can't do it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, I guess if we go back to the postpartum topic. Um, so lactation and your work in that area is certainly huge. Mm-hmm. Um, postural issues, as you mentioned, is also huge. Um, self-care. I think it's the self-care for new moms that goes out the window right off the bat. Yep. Um, and I often, I don't know if you know of a book by Marshall Klaus called Mothering the Mother, But I think that all of the work that massage therapists do um, is predicated on that idea that if you take care of the mother, then the mother will be able to take care of her baby or babies that much better. So again, whether it's massage therapy, osteopathy, taping, that's what postpartum families need sometimes just to get out of the house. Yeah, just the, uh, just the tools to uh, to do something, or even we do like erectus. I do erectus diastasis tape, but that just provides them their ability to get movement without risk of further tearing, or if they have pain, you know, they can now move with less pain, and I can teach them to do it themselves, which is really great. Right. Yes, and even to to explain what what it is, what yes. diastasis yeah. is, they don't necessarily even no. know they have whether it. they've got <laughs> no, mm-hmm. yeah. They see it mm-hmm. sometimes in the babies, but they don't know that they themselves have that issue as yes. well. It's so, true. Yeah. Once I had a friend who her kid was 19 and she went to have uh, an inguinal hernia and her diastasis recti repaired. And like the bulge was unbelievable. 20 years she had had this, essentially it was a... a it was huge. It was a huge sort of like herniation and and um, that long to get it repaired. Again, oh, that's... Did she know she had it? Well, she, she knew she had it, but again, okay. well, I've got the history behind me, right? So yeah. 30 years ago, nobody was testing women post-delivery no. for any of this, right? So it mm-hmm. was just like, yeah, it, it's like aches and pains in pregnancy 35 years ago was like yeah yeah you just live with it and then you'll have your baby you're and fine it's normal <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so to see the proactive um framework that we're living in now is a very different construct i i'm so grateful to know the history because it's like we have come so far in uh doing manual work with our perinatal mm-hmm. clients. I mean, the word perinatal wasn't even used no. 28 years ago. That's a, I mean, it was in the, the obstetrical textbooks, but it wasn't a term. Nobody would say, I, I do perinatal massage therapy. It wasn't, no one would know what that word meant. No, so, and they wouldn't even encourage you to do treatment pregnant to postpartum. It's just like, you're a mom, go be a mom. Yeah, exactly. And I always also want to say that the myths out there still abound. Like um, two days ago, I got a a message from an RMT who said, I have a pregnant client coming and she was told she shouldn't get any massage in her first trimester. And she needs, she's going to come in and let me do her head, neck and shoulders. What, What do you think about all of this? And I'm like, First off, where is she getting this information that first trimester massage isn't safe? You know, in 2023, Mm -hmm. why is that still out there? You know, so education is so big. So big. Yeah, I think even in the Austria world, we only, we proceed with caution between like 15 and 17 weeks when the placenta is taking over. Not usually, we still treat, but just proceed with caution. That's interesting. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've met midwives who are like, you know, once that that fertilized egg is implanted, you could jump up and down on a trampoline upside down. And if you've got a viable pregnancy, you're going to be OK. Um, yeah. yeah. So why are we always so afraid? And some of that, I think, is the myth busting that that we have to do as practitioners to, especially from the medical, Western, the Western medicine, right? They have a 
I feel like they haven't opened their books in a while to uh, re-educate themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we get to do it with our RMTs that come to our courses, so that's that's, that's true. It's, ex- it's exciting to pass on the torch to, or the knowledge that you, the th- I mean, it's exciting, 38 years, you got a lot of knowledge up there. It's great. Again, I like the historical overview, because I yeah. like that we're going in a good direction. Yeah. Um, and again, I think that's why I chose birth to talk about this time, because I think pregnancy massage therapy and whether it's, again, pelvic floor or osteopathy, <laughs> we're much further along in that with the pregnant population. But labor support, I put on my case history now, are you going to have a doula? Are you going to have a labor support? And it's no, 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 and no. And I just think, oh, and I don't, don't even they don't know and I even thinking back for my pregnancies I don't in our area the ne- there's not many doulas in the Niagara region so I think it's the lack of and I, and I don't maybe just the others don't know what it is if they haven't had children they wouldn't even maybe even look at the doula like that kind of support because right. again being on the other side doesn't matter what you know in that moment your brain goes to mush so you need somebody <laughs> to help yes. Well, and again, as an RMT, when you've got the relationship with the pregnant family already, it's a no brainer to, and I always say, even if an RMT only goes to one birth a year, that is one more birth where they are making a huge, significant difference Mm -hmm. in the birthing realities of a family. So Mm -hmm. we are, we are needed in the birthing rooms as well as pregnancy. hundred oh, percent. And seeing my daughter, I had back labor and I think I yelled at my husband because he didn't put a hand on my sacrum good enough because it wasn't in the right, <laughs> right. But yeah, if I had a doula or some sort of yeah. birth support, it would have been so much better. Well, and it's so funny because what I've seen is even if I was your doula and I put my hand in exactly the same place as your husband was, yeah. you'd probably be okay and it would probably help you. My hand but the poor partner, um, at that point, they become a little bit of the other when you're in pain. Uh, so they yes. can't necessarily do it right. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. I think having doulas takes a lot of the pressure off the partners. It, it's such so. a stressful experience. Will you be talking just, um, do you just do like just birth support doula? I've heard other doula, which I didn't know until recently, but they do other like postpartum doulas as well. Do you cover that as well? Uh, I don't so much. Um, The reason I don't is because with postpartum doulas, a lot of their work can be in the home doing sort of household chores. Okay. So they're... They may be holding the baby while the mom naps. They may be doing laundry. They may be preparing meals. They may be helping clean the house. I don't do any of that. That's fair. That's fair. I'll hold the baby. I'll hold the baby. But I feel like um, as RMTs, I want my hands on the mom doing the postpartum. So I will do home visits. Um, I will go in and teach baby massage yeah. or do baby massage or the, mm-hmm. I always, the one thing I feel is that if we are going to give good postpartum care, we have to have an environment where the mom can come with the baby and another person. So mm-hmm. even if that other person is walking the neighborhood with the baby or on the first floor, I practice out of my house now. So they're on the first floor with the baby and the mom is in the clinic room on the second floor. Mm-hmm. They're in proximity. And because if you don't have a space that the mother can have the baby, they're not going to come no, uh, exactly. until they're really sort of established. Mm-hmm. So that that's the thing about postpartum care, I would say, related to mm-hmm. being an RMT. So certainly some RMTs are postpartum doulas and go on for, mm-hmm. with that to get that training. But that's kind of how I break it down, the body work component versus the adjunctive care. And there are certainly uh, postpartum doulas that are night doulas. So the family oh, will hire okay. them to stay overnight, sleep in the sleep in the house, take care of the baby so the family can get sleep. I didn't know that was a thing. See, you're, you're already educating me. <laughs> that's a, I didn't know there was a thing, that's cool. Well, one birth I was at, I was the doula for the birthing experience 
and I stayed for like two hours after the delivery and massage the mom and stuff. And then the postpartum doula came to the hospital. This mom had had very traumatic deliveries and and I knew her she wasn't an yeah. RMT but she was a professional and we kind of said hello gave each other a hug I left she took over and that mom when she sent me a thank you card said that birthing experience was a redemptive experience for me oh, that's so nice so yeah it changed her memory of the first two that were really charged and stressful and and mm. the second was was traumatic to wow i look like a queen and i have a postpartum doula and a birth doula and yay yeah. so it's it's wherever you want to fit in i would say as an rmt and there are death doulas now too so yes i've seen that now yeah that's great so there's, there's so many there's so many avenues we can go down right yes so exactly. many doors well, going back to the postpartum stuff, I don't, I don't know what else. I think, I, I think we've covered what we are going to cover in our workshops, and um, I just wish I could come to yours. I'd like That's to a- be there. I'll, I'll be doing mine when you're doing yours. So. I know. We can maybe cross like two ships in the night in the hallway or something. Yeah, uh, we'll yeah. Wave at each other. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'll think, yeah. Besides my yeah, first taping for postpartum for like rectus diastasis anything that any pains they'd have during pregnancy they still have postpartum so we just kind of still support that in conjunction with encouraging them to you know see massage see chiro you know wherever they need to be pilates wherever they need to be at whatever time recovery time they're at we just try to meet their needs right and it's so great because again the fact that you're teaching the clients how to tape themselves Mm -hmm. if they can't get out of the house yet for Mm -hmm. whatever reason or they don't have the resources to have a mobile massage therapist come to them. They've got this taping skill that means they can they can take care of themselves to some degree in their own spaces, which is awesome. which makes them also accountable too, which gives them a bit more accountability to kind of help themselves. Yeah, yeah it's really it's nice. I don't teach them all the techniques, but the ones that I know they can they won't overdo or hurt, harm themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing you at the conference. It's always, uh, I'm glad it's your first time because the I'm energy excited. is buzz. Yeah, it's, I've had it's fr- I'm excited. I've had friends teach at the conference in the past, so they always kind of jazz me up over there. So I'm excited. Oh, it's a wonderful experience. So I look forward to meeting you there. Well, I will see you in the hallway. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Take now. care. No worries. Bye. Bye. <laughs>